Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, United to purchase up to 200 Jet Zero Z4 aircraft. MQ-9A Reaper logs first thousand hours as a Marine. And New Bill could put a major hit on low-level drone ops. And I'm your host, Talon Blake. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncurred vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. United to purchase up to 200 Jet Zero Z4 aircraft. United Airlines has opened a partnership with Jet Zero that could eventually put it on course to receive 200 Z4 all wing aircraft. The design aims to reduce fuel consumption by up to 50%. The investment was pushed through under United Airlines Ventures, which was created specifically to, quote, support our efforts to find innovative companies that can enhance the customer travel experience and help the airline lower its carbon footprint, end quote, according to UAV head Andrew Chang. While for now the deal includes no firm orders, it puts United on a path to purchase up to 100 aircraft with the option for 100 more. The future agreement will remain in the air, at least until Jet Zero can prove its design meets United standards for safety, efficiency, and performance. The startup has been fast-tracking the Z4's development under a 2023 contract with the U.S. Air Force, giving Jet Zero $235 million to create its full-scale demonstrator. This aircraft is expected to take flight in 2027. The Z4 is based on a blended wing body, or all-wing, construction that produces lift across the entire wingspan providing significant reductions to drag and chopping fuel burn per passenger mile by up to half. It can seat up to 250 passengers and fly with both conventional jet fuel and sustainable aviation fuel blends. This collaboration adds to United's push to reach net zero emissions by 2050. After the break, Boom gears up to test Symphony engine in Colorado. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. Boom gears up to test Symphony engine in Colorado. Boom Supersonic, manufacturer of the XB1 jet, recently announced that it would be using the Colorado Air and Space Port to test its Symphony engine. The three to five million dollar test facility will allow Boom to develop a sound propulsion system for its upcoming supersonic airliner, the Overture. The manufacturer has been on top of its game this past year, recently completing a full test cycle of its first supersonic design, the XB-1. The aircraft, also nicknamed Baby Boom, is a one-third scale piloted technology demonstrator for the Overture. Archer gets UAE design approval for first hybrid heliport. The General Civil Aviation Agency, or GCAA, has approved the design for the planned transformation of an Abu Dhabi cruise terminal helipad into a mixed-use hybrid heliport to accommodate both helicopters and eVTOL aircraft operations. Archer Aviation is working with its infrastructure partner Falcon Aviation in coordination with the GCAA. When completed, the facility is targeted to be the first hybrid heliport available for early commercial air taxi service in Abu Dhabi. Sierra Space replicates hypervelocity impacts on space station. Sierra Space, a commercial space company developing a space platform for defense and research, announced the recent successful completion of hypervelocity impact studies at the NASA White Sands Test Facility in Las Cruces, New Mexico, to refine the structural integrity of the company's large integrated flexible environment or LIFE habitat. The goal of the testing was to refine the design of a shield for the habitat to enable it to withstand high-velocity impacts from micrometeorites or orbital debris while on orbit. 
SpaceX successfully launches commercial resupply CRS-32 mission. The SpaceX Falcon 9 booster rocket successfully launched the Dragon spacecraft on its way to the ISS on NASA's 32nd Commercial Resupply Services mission, carrying supplies and a new set of scientific experiments. The spacecraft was ferrying a payload of about 6,700 pounds to the orbiting lab after lifting off from Launch Complex 39A at 4.15 a.m. Eastern Monday, April 21st, at the NASA Kennedy Space Center near Titusville, Florida. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to you the rest of the news. MQ-9A Reaper logs first thousand hours as a Marine. The MQ-9A Reaper recently surpassed 1,000 flight hours in training exercises with the U.S. Marine Corps. The milestone was met during a set of Marine Air Ground Task Force courses. The USMC has been operating GAASI's MQ-9A Reaper drones since September 2018, though they were initially under a company-owned, company-operated lease agreement. In 2021, the service transitioned away from the lease agreement by acquiring two Reapers from GAASI. GAASI has delivered a total of 17 MQ-9As to the USMC so far, with three more expected by the end of the year. In a recent announcement, GAASI revealed just how much the USMC has put the MQ-9A to work. The aircraft has passed more than 1,000 flight hours as a platform for service-level training exercises, as well as weapons and tactics instructor courses. These tasks were facilitated by both Marine and GAASI crews under the MAGTF Unmanned Expeditionary Program. The air crews met at an expeditionary landing field near the Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center in 29 Palms, California. They conducted satellite launch and recovery activities, meaning that the Marine crews operated the aircraft remotely from takeoff through a satellite link. After these messages, new bill could put a major hit on low-level drone ops. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. New bill could put a major hit on low-level drone ops. For the fourth time since 2017, Congress is reviewing a bill that could completely reshape low-level drone flight in the U.S. The Drone Integration and Zoning Act would allow all 90,000 of the nation's local governments to regulate drones below 200 feet as they please. The concept was first introduced under the name Drone Federalism Act in 2017. The bill changed to its current title, Drone Integration and Zoning Act, when Senator Mike Lee brought it back to Congress in 2019, 2023, and now in 2025 as S-1249. Despite the name change, the act maintained its purpose to give state, local, and tribal authorities, as well as private property owners, the right to regulate drone activity in the immediate reaches of airspace above. The latest reboot of the bill, same as the others, would define the term immediate reaches of airspace as the area up to 200 feet above ground level. The jurisdiction to regulate this space would be handed to local governments. If they all chose to act on it, according to recent census records, there could be as many as 90,837 new restrictions for low-level drone operations. This airspace is currently regulated by the FAA. Since the act wouldn't lower the current FAA-mandated drone ceiling of 400 feet, remote pilots would follow local regulations up to 200 feet and federal ones for the next 200. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.